So, Dr. Tammy, why call it the Naked Doctor? Well, it's the Naked Truth about health, wellness, and lifestyle, but it's also fun not to wear your clothes in the studio. Welcome back this week to the Naked Doctor Show. I'm Dr. Tammy. And I'm Chrissy. And we have a great show for you today. We are so excited. We have so much good information to share. Oh, yeah. Still continuing on with our workshop series of... Conscious creation, which is really exciting. That and is how some do you helpful, in, helpful stuff. Yeah, create the life that you love and yeah. move that. Um, you know, we talked about the brain being ninety uh, percent subconscious yeah. stuff that's showing up from our past, yeah. and ten percent conscious creating. So using that to really advance more, more, more than using more than ten percent of your brain. Yes, absolutely. And, and the stuff that keeps showing up is really interesting. Um, in as far as one of one of the things we're talking about in the workshop this week is creating a new story or what's your story unraveling your story mm-hmm. and then creating a new story yeah so kind of the life flip thing so that's really exciting and how do you create that new story so I think it's really interesting you were just telling me before you got here today that oh, you had yeah. a kind I had of a kind of a rough experience. week yeah. and it's your birthday happy and it's birthday, my birthday. Yay! <laughs> And I tend to have a, and I'm, I'm, again, I need to change this story, but I'm one of those people that stuff tends to happen around my birthday. I got measles when I was a kid, right on my birthday, stuff, stuff mm-hmm. like that. And you this know, week, I, go, go ahead. Well, before, I just want to kind of interject this before we kind of move on to the next thought, that um, my husband, Brian, teaches the stress model and everything. And, and so one of the th- things that he does is he works with um, attachment disorder kids, you know, mm-hmm. and, and things like that, people, foster kids and adopted kids. And one of the things that he teaches is that our birth story is really important because he says that when we're in utero, when we're developing, we can actually hear and process before we're born. Yeah. And when I first met him, it was really interesting because he said, what's your story? You know, what's your trauma? Yeah. And I was like, I don't have a trauma. And then I was thinking about, you know, when I was born, I was born when they had the twilight where they would put the yes, moms to sleep. Exactly, me too. And then the forceps to kind of yank you out. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, we've talked about that being in the were. cocoon and kind yeah. of, you know, the birthing process and reinventing yourself is that birthing process. <laughs> yeah. But when you think about what your birthday is, your birthday is a reminder of the most traumatic event of your whole oh, life. I have never thought about it that way. Yeah. What? And so, you know, especially if you were born under a situation of trauma, like you had parents that um, or maybe on dr- no, this isn't our story, but yeah. you know, if you had parents that were on <laughs> my drugs. mom is like, don't tell everybody I was on drugs. Oh my god, yeah. my mother does not sound that way. But. Yeah, no, not that way at all. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's 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 so interesting because when your birth month comes up, you have sometimes a lot of things that come up that are That's subconscious. Crazy, that like, makes so much like sense. Like with my now. son Donnie, you know, he's twelve now, and one of the things that came up with him just his birthday was in April. Was he was going through like some real, what I would describe as challenging behavior issues as a parent. Yeah. And Brian said, "Remember, it's his birthday, his birth month. Yeah. You know, and he's like reliving a lot of stuff. And when I think about Donnie's birth process, um. I'd been in the hospital, I'd been in the ICU for, you know, almost a month and I had really bad pneumonia and he was, we were both struggling for our lives, Yeah, you know, and so he's reliving all that birth trauma and I'm just thinking it's just another day, but it's not for him. So I think that's really interesting that the whole birth issue. So be kind to yourself, your birth month. So let's talk about what happened to you. Okay. So things have been going along fantastic and, uh, schedules have changed. Uh, school is out. So this has given me an opportunity to be able to Lots of transition. To, right. To take my uh, girls to grandma's in the morning and hit the gym before I go to work, mm. which that's fantastic. This mm-hmm. is one of those opportunities I've been wanting to get all my exercise out of the way in the morning. You know, I've streamlined my diet. Everything's going really well. Third day, uh, all of a sudden I experience this terrible pain in my back and I'm having some other skin irritation issues and just one thing after another, and I'm literally just on my back. Miss work for two days, something I don't like. I don't like missing work. That's just, I feel like that's such an uncomfortable situation. Somewhere I, your story is attached yes, to somewhere, work. Somewhere, yes, and there's some, there's some showing up. stuff in there, exactly, where I feel very, you know, like all the spotlight is suddenly on you, and what are people saying while I'm not there? Is oh, she's just lazy and doesn't want to come to work, and it's Memorial Day weekend mm-hmm. coming up, yeah, and maybe she just wants extra day. Oh, yeah, so I'm concerned about that. And so I'm laying there in this just pile of, and I'm, man, I'm right on that edge of just self-pity and 
frustration. I've mm-hmm. been doing everything right. Oh, Why wow. would this be happening to me? Why am I experiencing this pain? Stage two. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So uh, as often happens, I had a dream that sort of gave me some information. And in my dream, I walked into my kitchen, still fully feeling the pain in my dream even. Mm -hmm. And there's a man sitting at my bar. Mm. And he looks like, I was saying this, he looks like one of those guys from Law & Order that's like the drug addict and has been living on the street, like nasty old bomber jacket and five Mm -hmm. o'clock shadow. And he's kind of sweaty and he has you know, circles under his eyes. And I look over crawled at him out of and his I meth, go, meth dream. yes, crawled out of his, oh, it was awful. And I look at him and it wasn't like a surprise that there was someone in my kitchen. I look him right in the eye and I go, you're my pain. Mm-hmm. And he says, yes, I am. And I said, so I need to ask you some questions. And he goes, ask away. And I said, why are you here? And I said it that late, like, why? You're why judging are you it, here right? in my life? You're judging yes. it as bad. And I'm angry with mm-hmm. him. And he looks at me, and we had a long conversation, and I can't remember all of it, which is frustrating about my dreams, but sometimes that happens. But basically what he said was, I am here to be loved just like everything else. Mm-hmm. And by that, it was just like everything else is here to be loved. Everything is here to be loved. And once you understand that every part of your experience is actually here to be loved, this will help you understand this process. <clears throat> and I woke up and went, that was stupid. Like, that was <laughs> <laughs> How am I supposed to sit here and go, I love you, pain. I love you, pain. Like, that doesn't make any sense mm-hmm. to me. So I went on about my day. I was appreciative of the experience. And because I knew later on in this day, I'll, I'll understand better what this means because that's always how it works. Mm-hmm. I wake up and go, well, that didn't make any sense. And then as I go throughout my day, that learning will kind of download and I'll understand. And I did realize that I need to be just as loving to myself when I am in pain or experiencing something that I don't like as I am when everything is going fantastic and I feel all this gratitude and everything's going my way. Mm-hmm. So Chrissy, when you talk all this talk about how awesome everything is and being positive, how are you when the pain shows up? Mm -hmm. That's when your true core beliefs are really going to be strumming. Mm -hmm. What are you going to strum into your life? Are you going to resonate with, I feel sorry for myself. I thought I was doing everything right. Are you going to resonate with right now? I deserve more love, not less. Mm -hmm. So throughout the rest of the day, I was extremely loving to myself instead of being sad and being in a pile, I looked up upper back pain stretches and how to, you know, and and just loving, kind things for myself. I listened to the music I want to listen to. I wore comfortable clothes. I didn't put on makeup. I did, you know, I was just like, I'm going to be as relaxed and loving to myself as possible. And the rest of the day was fantastic. I feel so much better today. Mm -hmm. And my understanding was there are things that are happening to you that are actually going to benefit you in the long run that you may not understand that right at the moment. Mm -hmm. Now, the good thing is I've been able to see a chiropractor. I'm actually going to be able to improve some posture issues that I've had for a very long time. Some stuff is getting fixed that I probably would have continued to put off. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I can actually, in a weird way, say that I'm thankful that this happened to me because I would not have addressed some of these issues unless... It had just gotten really bad. So I wound up having to love it. This is so strange. (laughs) And when you think about, you know, you mentioned it being kind of a shingles thing with the skin outbreak. Yes, I do. And that is so painful. Yeah, it's your nerves and your nervous system. And when you think about your body and what drives your nervous system Mm -hmm. and what creates the signals to all those areas, it's all subconsciously programmed. Well, think about what was, let me me just say this real Mm -hmm. quick, because I want to get your medical opinion on it, but for me, I'm like, shingles is an old people thing. (laughs) Shingles sounds gross. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say, I have a painful rash. That's like the worst. Baby, what's wrong? I have a nasty, painful rash, and I pulled my back out. Don't touch me. Go away. I feel like a, I feel like Gollum. I feel so gross in this pile. So there was a lot of different things rolled into there. Mm-hmm. But yes, so what's going on? And when you, Okay, well, what shingles is, is it's a virus that's in there that's activated it's with like stress. It's like chickenpox yeah. from when you were, yeah. Yeah, so when you got stressed, basically, because mm-hmm. maybe some old birth trauma and some old things showed up and, yeah. you know, maybe 
you're reevaluating things and trying to create a new story that that's a stress to the body which yeah. can be a good stress or a bad stress it's how you and see i just had that it. show a week ago and i had been worried about that and picking out the clothes and how am i going to look and have i practiced enough and is everybody going to show up mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah so i understand where it came from and oh you know God. one of your new focuses with that could be that you just want to focus on the people and sending out the message yeah. of love well, and versus and, and all the, the stress of all this And stuff. that's weird yeah. with me too, is that these things tend to happen after the event that I was actually stressing about has passed. Mm-hmm. So here I built up all this cortisol and adrenaline and, uh, and then the show went really well. Mm-hmm. And I realized I'm, I'm loved. There are a lot of people here that care about me. This is great. And then once everything calms down, that's when my body then goes, here are the results <laughs> of the stress that you yeah. have felt over the last two weeks. Recognizing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it all makes complete sense. And I understand why. But wow, the opportunity in a dream to be able to look your pain in the eye mm-hmm. and say, why are you here? And anybody can do that. Anybody can look their pain in, in the eye, yeah. not even in a dream state, but yeah. in reality, if you have chronic pain or if you have any issue in your life, that's maybe pain is, you know, pain is pain. You yeah. know, I always tell yeah. people, they're like, well, Emotional my pain's pain. not as bad as someone else's pain. And it's all relative. But it's all relative. Yeah, Your, your worst is, is your worst. Yeah. 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 And you really have to look at that and say, you know, This is the result of something much bigger. It's never about the thing that's happening right then. It's always about something else. So, you know, kind of looking at your story. Let's look at your story a little bit because, you know, the whole thing wrapped around missing work. Let's ask ourselves, and this is something that people out there can do. Ask yourself, when is the first time that I felt this pain? Mm -hmm. And go back to it. So you might not be able to identify your first physical pain, but when's the first time you felt the pain of not being good enough for something. Oh gosh, not yes. showing and, up for and something. And it all has to do with my fear of how I'm going to be perceived. Mm-hmm. It really comes down to that. Mm-hmm. Because uh, when I was younger and first starting to work, it was it would be from my mother and she would say, oh, you can't miss work. Or it was even school. You can't miss school because it's going to look bad if you miss school and your, and your grades will fall. Oh, you can't miss work because everybody will think that you're faking it. And, and I know she was doing that out of care for me, mm-hmm. but immediately I would think, oh, as soon as I miss work, everybody just thinks that I'm, you know, lazy. So lazy would come mm-hmm. up or just... Um, untrustworthy and oh I don't want anybody to think that I'm untrustworthy you know things like that so your guilt. core value of oh my gosh I have guilt. an overactive guilt gland mm-hmm. <laughs> really? I think everybody's got an overactive yeah. guilt gland yes and so all of that piles on there so as soon as I was in pain and then I have a family that I have to take care of mm-hmm. I like to make everybody breakfast and I like to there's laundry that piles up I mean oh immediately I had this huge crushing feeling of how I'm letting everyone down this is terrible and then my next thought was I don't deserve this I've been doing everything right why is this happening to me Mm -hmm. but really it's a result of how hard I've been on myself my thought processes not taking care of things when I should have Mm -hmm. um you know I mean it all it all comes for a reason but I was able to understand that it's I'm actually going to be better in the, in the long exactly. run for this. I'm taking better care of myself than I was even just a few days ago. I have now a stretching routine that I'm doing when I wake up and before I go to bed, which is great. I should have been doing that all the time. Mm-hmm. But, wow. Wow. It's really... Hmm. Saying it's time for a little break, so let's take a little break. <sighs> and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about your story. Yes. And we're going to talk about what is a story. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that would be good. So we'll be right back with The Naked Doctor. Right, welcome back to the Naked Doctor. I'm Dr. Tammy, and this is Carissa, and we are sharing Naked Doctor truths. Everybody's yes. always like, "Why do you call your show the Naked Doctor?" And we always joke, it's "We lay it fun. bare." We clearly Man. have clothes on in the studio, yes. right? Yeah, come on, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's just we we are just completely naked in our truth and and sharing you know health, wellness, lifestyle, yep. and getting naked is yeah. really important um, as far as your soul. You yeah. know, getting exposing all of that and then you know addressing we, it you and i knew that when we came into this this wasn't going to be a show about here's how to have really pretty fingernails okay no mm-hmm. that's no. not we're going to come to here's it how to lose weight real. yeah yeah we're going to come to it and, and it is real. about all that it is about but all that. the only way you can really truly get to all that and sustain those things yes i've become known as the weight loss doctor yeah um is to 
get at those underlying things because right. those things will keep showing up and sabotaging you and you know showing yeah. up in different ways and that we're, we're taking the mask off and we're letting everybody know it's okay to be real and it's okay to work through that nasty stuff so that you can get to where you want to get and it's going to be genuine when you get there mm-hmm. you're not just putting a mask on yeah. while you feel terrible underneath it yeah. it'll be real so I had aware an awareness this week that was pretty interesting and my awareness this week was that um I have always, you know, the things that I perceive as negative about myself, because there, there we go judging, judging yeah. ourselves oh, or judging yeah. other people, judging us, um, have been that I have an obsessive brain. I'm obsessive all the time. You know, I'm constantly thinking. And so I, I read a book um, last week. It's called The War of Art. Not the, the Art war. of War, but The, the war, war of, of art. art. Okay. And it was very interesting because it talks about resistance Mm -hmm. and procrastination and how all that shows up just as resistance and so I thought I'm going to do something different and the the different thing that I did this week was just to get busy instead of like being distracted you know I check my emails you know I check my Facebook I'm, I'm looking for messages and I'm letting other people and other circumstances really dictate and control my day right and so I said you know what I'm going to do the same thing I did in med school and in med school, I knew that to have a desired outcome, which was to make the desired result or an A on a test or right. to get through, was that when I came home, I couldn't sit down and check my emails and I couldn't oh. I couldn't like get distracted by everything around the house or if the house was dirty, start cleaning house because I knew that by the time I had a snack and I did all these different things, by the time I actually sat down to study, it would be eight o'clock at night. Yeah, you would have lost hours. I would have lost hours and my productivity would go way down. So the first thing I would do, and this took a lot of discipline, was to sit down and start studying. Mm -hmm. So I really kind of pulled that thing that I looked at as a negative of my obsessive thinking. And I said, I'm going to take my obsessive thinking and I'm going to make it productive yeah so I would just sit down as soon as I got up and I would just start working and I would start writing and I've written like three books this week and they're all in the editing (laughs) stages but I mean it's crazy so I have see when you hone when you get a hold of that when you grab a hold of the reins on that crazy wagon train that is your brain sometimes Mm. and you direct it where you want it to go yeah because you've got all that power and all of that going on in your head for a reason it's all there and it's it's just all over the wonderful yeah Yeah, I think of that I'm like I I have all these creative thoughts and so many ideas and so much energy and if I don't have that focused Mm -hmm. and sometimes I need outside help Mm -hmm. sometimes I need another person to go hey Chrissy, it's time to sit down and focus. Remember when you said you wanted to do this? Let's mm-hmm. do it. And that, it's like that with my music. That was just something that I had put on the back burner for so long. And it, it took Aaron to go, you know what? I'm buying you a sound system and you're going to do this. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, awesome. And then now it's fantastic. But I had to do that. And so we attract great. those people into our lives. Because, <clears throat> I, yeah, you know, do. my husband is wonderful with just saying, just get busy, honey. Just yeah. sit down and write, you know. And so sometimes you do need those people and you attract those people because you know you need that extra yeah. focus. And that's yeah. one of the beautiful things about working with a mentor or a coach. And I just invested in a fantastic coaching opportunity of somebody that will keep me on track. And it's Wonderful. a financial investment too. So I'm like thinking, you know, I'm really gonna say yes to myself, but I'm gonna say yes to myself, to myself, yeah. not depending on someone else to fix me or you know fix exactly. the situation, but really depend on, you know, myself to show up to that in the, yeah. the best possible way. Yeah, because you, gosh, you're capable of so much awesome. I've seen it. <clears throat> and everybody and, is. Yes, everybody and everybody is. is. Everybody you know, we has all want to say, well, she just was born with the gift. She just was born with the, more. you know, the mojo. Or yeah. she was, no. Everybody's got their own mojo. We all struggle. Yeah. We all absolutely struggle. And so just kind of acknowledging that and saying, yeah, that's part of my story. I've been kind of an obsessive thinker and I've struggled and I've not really been focused in the past. You know, we love to label things. Mm -hmm. One of our favorite labels is ADD or attention deficit disorder. We want to label it and we want to use it as a limitation to say, well, I've got this ADD, so I I can't can't, really focus on anything. I can't focus on anything. And so it's like, no, take your diagnosis or your ADD and pour it into something. Yeah. 
Because yeah. have you ever seen a kid who's been diagnosed with ADD sit down in front of a computer and play a game for hours for on hours, end? For hours. Yeah. I mean, it's like they have incredible If focus. there's something that they have that personal interest in, all mm-hmm. of a sudden that attention, and again, I'm not trying to diagnose anyone or make a comment if somebody's struggling out there because everybody's situation is unique. Mm-hmm. But I, I personally would have interactions with kids that they were like, oh, it's ADD and it's hyperactivity and they never. And then I would see the child sit down with something he was really interested in and be absorbed for hours Mm -hmm. and I would think it's not that it's just that you're not giving him what he needs yeah he's not really getting what he needs in this situation and everybody learns differently yeah yeah. you know I, I have a dear friend who's got a son who's really struggling with that and I said the school system is not set up Mm-mm. for different learning styles no. you know and then she said well he sat down and he put together a a set of bunk beds with the little directions and all the little you know how many screws come oh, with yeah, some of those, those kits. tiny ridiculous allen wrenches yeah. that yeah and he was able to do that now could I do that? I, I could probably if I just if I wanted oh, to. Oh, I'd be complaining. But the I'd whole be time. complaining the whole time. I've tried putting furniture Somebody together. Somebody bring me a sandwich. This is terrible. Yeah, and so I've tried that kind of stuff, and it's just it's crazy, you know. And so that level of focus, I think, what comes into play is you have to ask yourself: Is this what I want to be doing? Yeah. Because if it's not what you want to be doing, then let go of that story. I should be. Yeah. Shoulds are like the. Oh bane of our existence should you know we start like, those should so early and that story that we're developing through our life i should be i should be it's like dragging an anchor behind you it is it, and it's just it's uh, a big anchor of shoulds yeah it really yeah. is and it's it, it can weigh you down and make you be very hard on yourself mm-hmm. it really can because i i encountered that too and any time your life isn't perfect, when you're when you have a divorce, when you have a job loss, when you mm-hmm. have financial problems, and you're like, oh, I should be better at this than that. I, everyone's gonna think, ah, oh, and that just becomes it, it makes it harder to get through what you're trying to process when you're so concerned about what everybody else is gonna think and what you should be doing right now. Yeah, I showed a video in my class last week, and it was all the people who didn't even really start stepping into their bigness I call it until their 50s or 60s or 70s that's important it's so important look at that more often because yeah I mean like and and all the excuse me all the um the nose they got and all yeah. that you know like Walt Disney you know he was told he wasn't talented and he couldn't yeah. draw you know I mean Walt Disney like, you know Oprah got Oprah fired, got fired yes. you know and 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 this happened in their 50s and 60s so so many people say well I'm too old you know, I'm like, how am I supposed to start stepping into my bigness when I'm 50 years old? Oh, yeah. You know? yeah. And I'm just realizing that, you know, I'm almost 50 years old and I am just now starting to step into yeah. my divine Well, think destiny. about it. This is when you've really collected enough wisdom to be exactly. able to make really good decisions and knowledgeable steps in your life. And like you said, when you talk to your pain, you didn't know in the moment what that was supposed to be. Right. But you had faith. I did. That it would show up throughout the rest of the day. Yeah. And it's probably showing up right now, what yes. the, the truth of no, that absolutely. was. absolutely. And so that's a part of this, too, is having the faith that everything's going to work out for you. Yeah. You know, because when you're focused on the negative or you're focused on the, I call it the what isness, then you can't see the bigness that's coming because you're so focused over here that you can't see yeah. that. And when you lock into the reality of what is, and that becomes dominant in your consciousness. You are not allowing the room for what it is that you really mm-hmm. are moving towards to come to you. Mm-hmm. Because you're so focused on what is, it's like watching a big pot of water boil. If you stand there with it and stare at it, it feels like it takes an hour. You walk away from it and suddenly <laughs> it's boiling. It's boiling. You're like, oh, oh, I gotta put spaghetti in there or whatever. <laughs> And you it had is the, the same way. You had really the faith is. that it was going to boil, but <clears throat> yeah. during the time, you're like, oh my gosh, yeah, it's, it's not boiling. It's uh-huh. not boiling. Yes. It's, it's still not boiling. still not boiling. Look <laughs> at it. What is it they say? A watched pot never yes, boils. Yes, no, that's exactly yeah. the way You're this watching is. your pot. You're watching your yeah. life, and your life is never going to boil as long as you're just watching it. Yes. You have to have the faith that everything's going to work out and step into that. That everything really is, whether you can see it or not from your perspective right now, everything is actually working in your favor. Mm -hmm. Because that part of yourself that is the subconscious, that is the higher self that we talk about, Mm -hmm. can see things from a higher perspective than we can. 60,000 foot view. Yes, absolutely. And so you're sitting there going, this sucks. 
relax and you're making yourself miserable when really your higher self is like, just keep moving. Mm -hmm. You're so close. You have no idea. Just keep moving. It's going to be okay. You're experiencing this pain for a reason. You can't see it right now. I know it sucks. But if you'll just move through it and take better care of yourself, you'll get where you need to be. Mm -hmm. That's basically what it is. So it's not, I need to love my pain and sit there in pain going, I love you, pain. It's not that. It's like, this is here to be loved just like everything else. Mm -hmm. This is here to be acknowledged and respected and understanding that it is a piece of a very big puzzle that you just can't see the big picture of Mm -hmm. yet. All unraveling. Yeah. So let's talk about the story a little bit. Yes, the story. What is the story? If you were a writer... And I kind of think of like when I was in grade school and they taught us the elements of a story. You know, the elements of the story <clears throat> as they kind of unfold. I'm just going to kind of pull my notes out here just a little bit because it's been a while since I've been in grade school and writing yeah, a story. Yeah. Or you have a setting. Okay, yeah. so your setting, what's your setting in your life, right? So what's going on in your life right now? What is the, the you know, the, the environment? Mm-hmm. Where are you at right now? So again, you know, this is about just recognizing your past not like living in it or the what isness but it's going to help us write a new story so the other thing is the plot what's the plot going on right yeah. now what's the plot in your story right now and what are you being developed you know i always say that while well, you're working on your goals your goals are w- working on you so what is the circumstances that are being developed around that and then the characters. Who are the characters yes. in your life? Who's your significant other? Who's your children? You know, really consider all that and how they're kind of playing in and how you've attracted them into your life. You just said, you know, you attracted Aaron to kind of light a fire I'll, under I'll you. Direct that. Yeah, yeah, I've attracted this man <clears throat> who's not afraid of anything, who has no risk aversion. He's like, who go just, for it. Yeah, I was just like driving in the van on the way over here, his van, and it, it was playing some of his um, audibles, which are like all, oh my you gosh, know, biographies and yes. goal stuff. And, and this man was talking about Donald Trump and, you know, how he has been bankrupt so many times. And, you know, his story could have ended right there. He could have said, well, that didn't up. work out. I give, I give up. up. And he's still like living his story, yeah. out, even to the fact that he could well, I don't know, be oh our president. Oh my gosh, think about that. Because if, you know, I'm sure no one has ever told him that that was a bad idea. <laughs> bad idea. <laughs> he's like, I don't care. I'm doing it anyway. I don't care. <laughs> And then there's conflicts. And, you know, every good story, you go to a movie because you want to see the conflict. If it was just a happy movie and everybody was just love, 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 you'd never go to a movie. Creation and motion comes out of conflict. If there is no conflict, there's no growth. You have to have there's contrast. There's no movement. Yeah. yeah. You've got to have that contrast. Yeah. Ugh. We talked about that last week. You have to know what you don't want so that you know, you know what, what you, you do, do want. want. Yeah. So you're developing all that. So your conflicts are showing up. Yeah. And your point of view. Your point of view can change. And that is the most important part of your story is your point of view. What is it right now? Because your point of view can change. And the only way you can change your story is to change your point of view. Yeah. So that's really important, too. And I was thinking about that, you know, because I've been in plays and I've done acting as well. And they always say, you need to know the character's backstory. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to develop that fully because that helps you to understand their motivation for what they're doing now. Oh, yeah, well, that makes sense. Well, then isn't that the truth for everyone? Mm -hmm. It's if you don't really understand why you're doing something, you've kind of got to dig into that backstory a little bit to be able to understand where that motivation is coming from. You do. I just had an experience this week that I had somebody that did something that I totally did not understand from my perspective, and I always say everybody's right from their perspective, yeah. I did not understand. And I really had to kind of step back, take that 60,000 foot view and go, what happened in their life yeah. that made that a reasonable course of action yes. for them? You know? why, why was that the best thing in their mind for them to do? What was their point of view? And I may not story? be able to ever know that, but I do take that into consideration now when I, when I come into contact with people that I feel like their behavior to me seems to be questionable or unacceptable or Mm -hmm. not that I I, I try not to stand in judgment but I try to understand that clearly something has happened to them that's making them feel like this is the best thing for them in the moment and then I just have to kind of step away (laughs) because I offer them love in my heart maybe not out loud bless you bless you (laughs) and I'm I'm just gonna go over here now (laughs) and I love this saying um um, bless and release. Yeah. You know, there are some people in your life that you will just never understand their story and right. their story doesn't match your story. And yeah. it's just better for you, healthier for you to move on and just yeah. bless them and, and release okay. them. And that's okay. 
Until, you know, until you get to this, like, kind of stage four, where we talked about that before, this kind of unlimited, you know, where we're all connected and you can really believe that yeah. and you can just love them unconditionally. That's yeah. that's where you have to get to to be able to, to deal with those people yeah. in your life sometimes. Again, you can't see that bigger picture. You, if you have yeah. trouble seeing your own, you're really not going to be able to see exactly. somebody else's. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, what is it they say in the Bible? You pick the... Uh, the boulder out of your own eye before you right, pick the, right, the before splinter. You, yes, yeah. absolutely. Wow. It all ties together. Yeah. <laughs> now my brain is like crunching on things that I've experienced before. I'm like, oh man, maybe I shouldn't have been so hard. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They're saying it's time for a little break. We're going to take a little break and we'll be right back with a naked doctor. Welcome back to The Naked Doctor. I'm Dr. Tammy. And this is Chrissy. And we are talking about your story. Yeah. And how to recognize it, unravel it, and create a new one. Yeah. And, you know. Love it a little bit. One send lo- some love at send it. Send some love at it. And one of the other things that I want to kind of take it a little deeper is the hero's journey. Mm-hmm. Is that in the war? Is that in the book that you no, just read? No, no. Oh, okay. But you know, it's so interesting because everyone loves the hero's journey. Yeah, everyone loves up. a really big battle. Yeah, you know that's delicious. Yeah, you know, just people who kind of got by in life are, you know, just they're just part of the. They blend into the background of the scenery of your life, yeah. but the people. It's like, have you ever been tested? Have you ever been tested? Yeah. So I want to share um, an experience that I had this week with okay. a patient, but I want to talk about the the structure of the hero's journey just a little bit so that people can appreciate that. So there's a genesis or a backstory. We just talked about mm-hmm. backstory. And then there's an innocence. So we talked about um, learned helplessness. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people kind of come in with this learned helplessness. We're children, you know, we're developing. Um, so we start out with this innocence. And then we have this separation. I kind of think of, like, um, who was the girl that was up in the tower? Was it Rapunzel? Rapunzel, yes. And she had to let down Rapunzel. her hair. She experienced her separation because she was put in this tower because she was perceived to be so beautiful that, you know, her father had to be protected. Had to be protected. Never go out in the real world. Told everything was dangerous out there. Yeah, and she believed it. So yeah. that was part of her oh, yeah. story, right? So the separation and then the call to adventure. The prince showed up and he said, Rapunzel, yeah. Rapunzel, let down your hair. You and know, she had a choice. She had a choice. You know, she could have stayed in there safe That's and right. sound and secure. And then this is an interesting and it's always the twist. And it's a very subtle twist. But everyone has had this at some point in their life is this kind of, you know, you had the call to adventure and then you have the refusal of yeah. the call. Yeah. So there's this point where you say, oh no, it's safer up here in the tower, right? You know, I probably shouldn't step out there and really put myself out there. It'd probably be safer. And sometimes you have people around you going, you know, it'll be safer if you don't. Because mm-hmm. here's, Lots of here's all around the there bad reasons <laughs> why this could go wrong. And that's what uh, fear is all about. I oh, think yeah. I think there's an acronym oh, yeah. is, um, you know, um, what did they say? Um, false evidence of, you know, Something, false evidence something. appearing real yes. is fear. Oh my gosh, that's right. So, you know, I mean, it's it's, it's never real. You know, it's just yeah. this perceived thing and it's part of that story. Okay, so after the refusal of the call then becomes this initiation and it's this step into the road of trials. And usually that road of trials leads to the big battle, whether that's a dragon or whether that's, you know, Rapunzel climbed down and, you know, she started experiencing life yeah. out there. That was scary. You well, know, she, she had to take things. a step there. She had to... Yeah. Really put herself out there. Yeah. And then what was it, you know, that, you know, someone shows up, I can't remember in the original story that was, you know, trying to get her back into yeah. the castle, yeah. you know, and so, you know, the, the dragon or whatever the situation may be. And then there's the enemies and the catalyst. Those are yeah. so important for your growth. I mean, we always want to look at the enemies as, oh my gosh, they're so bad and, and get shut down and being told no, being told no. Yeah. And so an enemy can be somebody who's done something really bad, but an enemy could just be someone who from their own story and their own perspective is telling you no. So right. they can shut or, you down. Or, you know, you might, your dream might bump into somebody else's dream. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I want to be the one that wins this, not you. So, mm-hmm. you know, you, you often come into conflict that way. Mm-hmm. And then there's allies, mentors, and friends. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we talked about, you know, our husbands being those, you know, those friends that kind of each other. other. We we lift each other up as often as we can. Exactly, exactly. And then you have the climax or the battle. And so that's really where you find 
have you got what it takes? Yeah. And that really is the, where the rubber meets the road. Yeah. And then there's atonement and rescue. And, you know, that, that can be um, where you discover, hey, I really, I survived this. I, yeah. you know, and, and I thrived. You know, it's not just about survival, but thriving. And then there's the kind of return and that you're back to your, your life. And how do you implement what you learned through that battle right. and then there's freedom there's freedom at the end yeah. so that's the hero's journey and that's where you really recognize the hero is their freedom from their battle and what they came through mm-hmm. and that's what everybody wants is the freedom and yeah. so as you're kind of living your life and you're having this journey you know really looking at um trusting and having the faith that all of that's coming because of this yeah because when you're in the storm you can't really well, and when I that. think about all of this, I feel like different aspects of your life, you can be in different stages of that journey mm-hmm. and maybe in more than one stage on different journeys at the same time. At the same time. So maybe your family life is going along this journey and then your work life is at this stage of the journey and then you have some personal goals that might be at this stage of the journey mm-hmm. and you're kind of going back and forth and you have different friends and different you know, obstacles that you're meeting. So it's kind of constantly molds into this one big globe of experience that you're having but ultimately that goal is to be at that place where you feel triumphant and confident in what you're doing so Mm -hmm. i just kind of realized that too when we were talking about that about the approaching your pain with love because i think what i was doing when i was feeling so sorry for myself was i was more in a fear mode and a pushing against mode Mm -hmm. because my thought was, what if I feel this forever? Mm -hmm. What if this means I'm getting old and I'm just going to have this back pain? What if this means, what if this means? And you just said you attached shingles to an old person's disease. I did, I did. So I had all of that fear. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't so much again about loving that pain. It was like, what are you focusing on right now? Are you focusing on fear? Are you focusing on regret? I shouldn't have exercised. I shouldn't have had bad posture when I was 14. I shouldn't have, are you focusing on things that people have said about you? Are you focusing on getting older? Or are you, regardless of this, continuing to love yourself through it? Mm-hmm. Yep. Ugh. So I had a really powerful experience with a patient this week. Yes. And I just want to share that. So I did a house call, and the man has Lou Gehrig's disease, which is a neuromuscular thing that's very degenerative very quickly and mm-hmm. can lead to death very quickly. And um, so, uh, you know, I visited with the family on several occasions because I, I just understand from this, like, higher self perspective, God download, you know, that it's much more than trying to deal with his autoimmune condition. It's much more than dealing with his hormone imbalances and his nutritional imbalances. It is much bigger than that. So in this process of working with them, I have realized that it is not about them at all. It is about what I have learned through my journey with them. Mm -hmm. And so just to kind of tell you the story, his, his story was that okay so he's imagine i'm sitting in their living room he's in a wheelchair he can't even wipe his nose right he's completely um incapacitated from the waist down basically and his wife's sitting there and you know they have you know many challenges and struggles just in their relationship they had their shoulds were I should have like gone gotten to retirement and I should be out traveling in my RV and I should be experiencing life and so all their shoulds are you know bumping up against their yeah. re- reality. He keeps saying, "But this is reality. I can't even wipe my nose." And I kept saying, "Your reality is your story, and until you change it, your reality is not going to be anything different." Mm-hmm. So he told me, and he confided in, in in me, and he was a little embarrassed after he said it because it was like you know. You know, once something comes out of your mouth and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just said that out loud. Sometimes you do it anyway because you feel compelled. And He said, why wouldn't it be better for me to just go ahead and die of this disease? And we're looking at three to six months for him to, to death with this situation. Wouldn't it be easier for me to just go ahead and die from this than to get better? And then to die of something else, to like get my life on track and be a Wait, testimony. What? And then like I'm in a freak car accident or I have a heart attack or maybe my life is miserable because he's not he's not happy right now. Yeah, and yeah. he's like, maybe my life looks worse than just checking out. You know, and it was like, wow, that's really wow. big. So as we went through his story, I said, let's go back and let's look at your story and tell me the first time you were told you couldn't do something. And he couldn't really come up with anything. And I said, when was the first time you had a goal? And he said, I never really had any goals. He's like, I just wanted to get through my life. I just, you know, I just became a truck driver and I just did what I was, you know, the next step. I wasn't really clear about what I wanted. 
But he said that when he was little, his two brothers were very musical and they played musical instruments. And he said, I always wanted to play the steel guitar. And my brothers told me that, and everyone in the family said, no, the brothers got the talent. And you shouldn't even try. So he never even picked up an instrument. Oh, that's terrible. And he's always wanted to play the steel guitar. And so, you know, I kind of did a little karate kid with them thing with him. And I said, <laughs> you've got to get a steel guitar. Yeah. I said, because your belief system, you get what you believe. You don't get what you want. You get what you believe. And if he doesn't believe that he can get well, first he's got this conflicting story that you know what if I get well and it's not any better and then he's got this conflicting story that I don't believe that I can get well because the doctors tell me this is a degenerative disease that's going to kill me in six months you know so he's got that story because everyone is telling me it's not possible yeah so so I told him I said you need to get a steel guitar she's like I can't even wipe my nose and I said you can hold a guitar in your lap and I said and And a steel guitar like lays flat it lays flat on your lap yeah and you can pluck it yeah. And you can do the next thing and the next thing. And you can believe that next step. You know, right now your belief system is kind of like loving yourself. How am I supposed to love myself? I hate myself. You can say I'm enough. Yeah. You know, you can move into that. You can that. take that baby step. You can take that baby step. And that baby step counts as a step. It does. It doesn't have to be a giant step. It doesn't. Just a little one is a movement forward. Yeah. It's just developing that belief. And so, you know, it was just interesting as we talked about his story. Um, we also came to the realization that a year before he got sick, they were talking about separating he and his wife. Oh. And she was really unhappy. And she was moving into this space where she was separating herself from him. Even if it wasn't physically, it was probably yeah. emotionally. Yeah, and emotionally. all that was starting way before. And yeah. he said he didn't realize that. She she confided that in, in the experience. Um, well, and, something in him probably knew And that. I told him that. I said, you knew. You yeah. knew. And I said, you know what? I said, you're either consciously or sub- unconsciously creating. And I said, if, you, if, you, if I'm really real with you as your coach and your life coach and telling you, look at this and be honest with yourself because that's the worst thing we do with our stories is we're not honest with ourselves Mm -hmm. you knew that separation was happening and think about this think about the possibility that you attracted this disease into your life because what did it do it made her stay yeah because she's a woman of integrity she's not going to leave a man who's sick and dying yeah right and so if you're not very clear it's kind of like the man who wanted to remodel his house kept thinking about it and then the pipes burst in the yeah. ceiling yeah. and he had to remodel yeah. his house. If you're not clear, you know, God will put things in your path. Yeah, or the path universe will, will run put that things way, in your whether path. it's comfortable or uncomfortable. Yeah. You might as well do it in a comfortable way and, right. and decide what you want because yeah. things are just gonna happen. Right. So now I'm like, you're in this place, you can unravel this story and you can create a new story. Yeah. And if you need to just take baby steps by putting a steel guitar in your lap that might be what you need to do. So anybody out there listening, you know, what I would say is if you don't believe that whatever it is out there, and maybe you don't have that BHAG, that big, hairy, audacious goal, maybe you never thought about being a rock star or being, you know, the top person in your sales division. Maybe you've never had that goal. But, you know, maybe you should think about developing some sort of goal and moving into some sort of belief system so that you can start working towards that. Because I told him, you're either busy dying or you're busy living. Yeah, and he's absolutely. busy dying. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That is big. That mm-hmm. is really big. And kudos to you for being able to say that. <clears throat> because I know a lot of medical professionals especially would just be like, well, I'm going to just make you comfortable on your way out. Yeah. So have a good evening. <laughs> like and you were able this to look him in the eye and go, me. let's take this apart and mm-hmm. tell you, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I appreciate you for doing that, Tammy. That's Oh, it's not an easy thing to do. No, he's absolutely sit, not. There crying. And they're saying it's time for a break. So we'll take a little break ah. and we'll come back and we'll finish this story. Yes, up. we will. All right. Be right back with The Naked Doctor. Hey, welcome back to The Naked Doctor. I'm Dr. Tammy. And this is Chrissy. And we're just talking about unraveling your story and making a new one. We were wow, just... this is, this is going to be multiple shows. I yeah, I think like. so. I think so. <laughs> this is a big one. So one of the things that I was left with, um, with that story with the, the man who had, uh, who has ALS. Because you're experiencing it for a reason too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I, 
like I said, it's 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 to me, it's really not even about them. It's yeah. you know about my experience and what I'm learning from that. Yeah, yeah. So you know, regardless of the outcome of what happens with him or what he decides, I can't attach to that outcome because this is really what I can take away from that. So as I was, what I what I did, I was there almost two hours and. Finally, I just, I felt a little overwhelmed and I just got quiet in myself. I got still and I just kind of asked God, what, what, what do I do here? Because it kind of turned into, he said, she said, and they were starting to bicker at each other. And I said, we have to stop this right now. Mm -hmm. And I pulled him in, you know, he's in a wheelchair. So I made him pull in closer to me. And then I got up and I put her in my seat where I was and I made her take his hand and made them look each other in the eye. And I said, you know, your story was that you wanted to retire and have time to spend together because you've worked on the road all these years. You have all the time in the world to spend together. Yeah. And I said, this is, you've attracted this and you have like 24 seven, you're in each other's face and you have a decision whether you're going to be loving to each other and really embrace this, whether you get well or not. Or you have the choice to just continue being distant and angry at each and other miserable. and victimized. And so, you know, I made them look in each other's eyes and tell them what they needed to each other. And, um, you know, that was a hard thing. And I said, I want you to feel their pain. And I told her, I want you to feel his pain of being a man, for one thing, who is used to taking care of the family, mm -hmm. who can't even take care of himself. Yeah. And, you know, she's got cancer. And I said, I want you to look in her eyes and see her pain. I mean, they both, they both attracted these fatal situations you know and I want you to feel her pain and I want you to really start just talking to each other as people that just have some faith and trust that you love each other and just ask the other person what they need and it was funny because as their conversation started to unravel a little bit he started like kind of doing kind of pillow talk with her like I think oh. I think you're beautiful I think you're sexy that you know little nightgown that you wear you know just is is amazing and I, I think you're beautiful and she just started blushing you know and and they still kind of tried to pull me into the conversation and still were trying to say well he does this and she does that and I said you all need to talk to each other so after about 15 minutes I got them talking to each other and communicating with each other and I slipped out <laughs> and you were like and I'm gone and I'm gone <laughs> my work here is done <laughs> and on my on my drive home I realized all of the areas in my life that I am attracting things and situations to create a circumstance that may or may not be really consciously created the way I want them to be. Mm -hmm. And I'm just allowing them to happen. Yeah. So <clears throat> my story and unraveling my story is to say, where are all the areas in my life that I've constructed these limitations? Yeah. <clears throat> and how do I want to change that? Yeah. I realized that this week when I was flat on my back in bed, but I had my daughters next to me because they're out of school now, and we were loving each other, and Tabitha rubbed my feet, and we were really having good conversations and enjoying watching a movie together, and I realized that one of the things that I had been asking for recently was some time <gasps> off to spend with my kids. Oh, that gave me goosebumps. And I thought, oh, but I didn't mean this way. But it was almost like the universe kind of had to put me flat on my back at that point in order to help me get that. So I was, th I stopped and I was thankful in that moment. Mm -hmm. I said, I understand that I, I don't necessarily want to say thank you that I'm in pain, but I am very grateful that I had a little bit of downtime to rest and mm -hmm. to spend some time with my kids the way that I really wanted to spend it, you know, mm -hmm. close and having conversations and really loving each other. So my next thought was, okay, now I want more of this in my life, <laughs> but I'm gonna facilitate that in an easier way, mm -hmm. not where the universe has to throw me flat on my back in order to be able to get what I want. Illness is so often that way. And so if we talk about, you know, if we wanna go into medical doctor zone world, medical doctor you know, zone. and talk about illness and imbalances, a lot of those are being attracted into our lives to get Boy, us that's tough some for downtime to answer that too mm -hmm. because what comes up as soon as i say that is people will say well then why did this child get sick mm -hmm. why did this child get sick if it's something that's attracted and i have to say you have to think about it from 
your situation. Yes, this child may have come into this world with some intentions, again, from a bigger picture that you don't know, mm -hmm. but there was also something in you that felt that this child needed to be 100% dependent on you, and sometimes that can facilitate itself in a very unusual and painful way. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, it's difficult when you're trying to counsel someone in that situation, and we're talking about spirituality, and the first thing they say is, but why did my child get sick? And that's when you just have to pull back and say, again, there's a perspective that we can't see mm -hmm. from right now. Mm -hmm. And there were other forces at work that may not make any sense to us, mm -hmm. but this is just how this particular situation is going to roll. Mm -hmm. And what are you going to learn from this? Mm -hmm. And that's where faith and trust comes in. Yeah. You know, and it's not, you know, everybody wants to say, well, it's God's will. I mean, it, it is the universal design. It is the It is a universal plan. design. And when you think, when you think, what happens is these limiting thoughts, you know, like before when I've had like little spats with my husband, in the moment, you think it's the end of the world. Really? You yes. You think my life is never going to be okay again. I'm going to feel like this forever. Yeah. Grief or pain or frustration or whatever it is, you tend to get stuck in that moment. And you can, if you yeah. wanted to stay there, yeah. if you wanted to sit in that spin cycle and just let it run forever, you could, you but yeah. you've got to make your choice to move through that. Yeah. And if you can look at it, the bigger picture, you know, I've potentially got 40 more years with this man. We have lots of days to have oh, good times yeah. and bad times. It's not the end of the world. No, it yeah. never is. So just, you know, change your perspective a little bit. And who knows? I'm not saying we have other lifetimes, but I kind of think we do. Yeah. So it's not even about this lifetime, maybe even. So be kind to yourself. Just yeah. soften but up a little bit. This can be the lifetime where you wake up and say, all right, yeah, I'm taking I am charge. learning <laughs> what I was going to learn from this life. I'm going to make it as awesome as possible. And then the next one, I'll just roll from there. I'm in control. Yeah. So that's the beauty. Okay, they're saying it's time to wrap up. Um, please goes like, us, like us on our Naked Doctor show yes. page and give us your comments. Tell us things you'd like us to talk about, experiences that you'd like us to share. If you'd like to be a guest, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. We have some new plans for doing some live broadcasts around the square oh, yeah, and some that's exciting be things. Fun. Yep. Um, my new book, Balancing Act, is all about hormones. And, you know, it's really hard to kind of plot out your life when your physiology is a little unbalanced yeah, so yeah. Um, it's called balancing act and it's on amazon you can get it there or you can uh, find out more on our facebook page and um, i would just leave you with uh, you know look at your story unravel the crap out of it yeah and knit a new one back together and even your pain is and here to be loved like be everything loved. else yes because it can really help you look at things but you know just recognizing that um, pain sometimes shows up or disease shows up because you weren't consciously creating an opportunity to have something that you wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, everybody have a blessed week. We love you so much and we just wish all the best for you and we'll see you back here next week on the Naked Doctor Show. Bye. -bye. The Naked Doctor Show is produced by Toy Robot Productions in association with Butler Broadcasting and Better Living Rx. Our audio engineer is Earl Hale. Our technical engineer is Matt Wright. Our executive producer is Dr. Tammy Post. I'm Chrissy Hale, and this has been The Naked Doctor.